Welcome to Waters World. I'm Jesse Waters. Media dishonesty, that's the subject of tonight's Waters Words. Eight years ago, SEAL Team 6 killed Osama bin Laden in Pakistan. Immediately after, President Barack Obama told the world about the mission. Operation Neptune Spear was successful. The president wanted to bring Osama to justice. He greenlit the mission, mission accomplished. He did it. It was a bold call. Joe Biden actually was against it, by the way. But President Obama deserved credit, and he received it. Obama captured Osama. A difficult decision. This operation has been in the planning stages for more than eight months, and President Obama was deeply involved every step of the way. So there's always a high level of risk, but the president, I think, handled this uh, brilliantly, frankly. It wasn't just the mainstream media that gave Obama credit. People on the right did it, too. We need to open the program today by congratulating President Obama. President Obama has done something extremely effective, and when he does, this needs to be pointed out. I give President Obama a lot of credit here, because I thought it was a gutsy choice. Hey, when you oh. consider everything that could have gone wrong, yeah. and how President Obama would look today if it did, it, always it took a lot of courage to do that, and I do admire that. I think he made a courageous decision in a difficult tactical circumstance. There was great risk here, so I think uh, he justifiably can, can, can claim credit. Now, we have to give credit where credit's due, obviously. Truman deserves credit for ending the war in the Pacific. Reagan deserves credit for winning the Cold War. And clearly, Donald Trump deserves credit for killing ISIS leader Baghdadi. Military sources tell Fox the raid into Syria was more dangerous than the bin Laden raid. Behind enemy lines in Russian and Syrian-controlled territory, imagine if it had failed in the midst of impeachment and the Syria pullout debate. Trump would have been crucified like Jimmy Carter. The Trump administration and the brave soldiers pulled it off. But the media is so dishonest, it refused to say Trump scored a win for America. This president is determined to get credit for killing al-Baghdadi. Not because of the president, mm -hmm. but in spite of him. Perhaps in spite of the president. In spite of President Trump. Despite the president's, quote, ineptitude. Largely in spite of. Largely in spite of. And not because of. And not because of Donald Trump. <laughs> How pathetic. I mean, Trump campaigned on bombing the hell out of ISIS, destroying the caliphate, and killing their leaders. And he did it. He set a goal, he settled on a strategy, and he gave the go orders. The military executed it. We all know he didn't jump out of an Apache and kick down the compound doors himself. He's the commander in chief. Most people, especially leaders, understand this. In fact, Donald Trump personally congratulated Obama on Twitter after the bin Laden raid, saying this. I want to personally congratulate President Obama and the men and women of the armed forces for a job well done. We should spend the next several days not debating party politics, but in remembrance of those who lost their lives on 9-11 and those currently fighting for our freedom. God bless America. But guess what? Barack Obama has not congratulated Donald Trump for the Baghdadi kill. He hasn't said a word about it. Silence. Now, he did have time to congratulate the Washington Nationals on their World Series, though. <laughs> Come on. Look, congrats to the world champion Nationals and their fans, a great group that always showed up when it counted and was never afraid to show a little joy, dancing in the dugout, laughing, believing, and always sticking together. A true team with a spirit that do us all well. Sticking together. Really. You didn't really look like you were. Now, maybe if Obama had tried harder to kill ISIS instead of trying so hard to frame Trump for collusion... He would have gotten the credit he's so desperately looking for. So Trump won the war on ISIS. He took on China, has crime and poverty rates dropping, low gas prices and the best economic numbers in 50 years. And the Democrats want to impeach him for a phone call. The country's not going for this. Let's look at the polls. Just 36 percent want to impeach. 22 percent say investigate, but don't impeach. And 37% say drop the investigation thing altogether. So when you tally it all up, 59% of Americans are against impeachment. 59% are against it. Keep that in mind when the fake news media skews these polls. Now, here's how we feel about the Trump-Ukraine phone call. 
38% say it's an impeachable offense. 21% say it may be wrong, but doesn't rise to the level of an impeachable offense. And 31% say nothing wrong with the call at all. So 52% say the call wasn't impeachable, and just 38% say it was. It's a huge margin, a huge margin. So how is impeachment playing in the swing states? It's a total loser. Check this out. Over 50% of voters are against impeachment in Arizona, Florida, Michigan, North Carolina, Pennsylvania, and Wisconsin. Now, these polls I'm sharing with you, they're from USA Today and the New York Times. They don't really lean right, okay? So, where are we as a country? Who are we? And how do we feel about all this? 89% of us are proud to be an American. 87% of us are tired of this political circus in Washington. And a whopping 70% of us believe in America first. There's a silent majority of Americans who believe what you and I believe. Now, the media tries to hide that. They try to deny that. And they try to deny Trump credit and make you believe their lies. But you and I know we don't need the media to tell us what to think. We know what's right. And that scares the hell out of them.